Hello everyone, my name is Patty Madera and I will be your producer for today. Uh, today we have Claudia who will be our host for today. So we will go ahead and get started. Hello everyone and thank you for joining us today for our Community Conversations Supporting Seniors. Um, a little bit about Community Conversations. Um, this was started as a way for us to stay connected with the community as well as sharing um, new information about a variety of topics and as well as sharing resources, um, especially during this difficult time. And today our Community Conversation will be on how we can support um, seniors during especially during this difficult time and we have a great panelist joining us here today um, one of our panelists will be um, laura medina who serves as the director of community partnerships and client support for st vincent meals on wheels in the city of los angeles in this role laura's responsibilities include volunteer administration preceptor for undergraduate and graduate student internships uh, multi-sector nutrition and support services, collaborative initiatives and client support, especially in the areas of advocacy and social connections. She was instrumental in the development and implementation of the program's friendly visitor and social call programs and continues to strate strategically pursue um, support services for the program's clients. St. Vincent Meals and Wheels was founded by Sister Alice Marie Quinn, daughter of Charity in 1977, and represents the largest privately funded Meals on Meals program in the United States. Over 2,000 seniors are served home delivered meals, including medically tailored meals and breakfast. About 75% have a household income of less than $20,000. In keeping with Laura's mission to serve those in greatest social and economic need, she previously served in varied leadership positions in government, nonprofit, and private sectors, including the Los Angeles County Area Agency on Aging, um, and senior resources and advocacy for farm workers in the Salinas Valley, and elementary and high school special education in low-income communities in the St. Gabriel Valley. Then we will have um, joining us will be Jacqueline Rodriguez. Uh, Jacqueline Rodriguez is a senior recreation specialist for the city of Whittier. She has served the Whittier community for 80 years, beginning her career with the Parks, Recreation and Community Services, Youth Services Division. She now proudly serves the seniors in the Whittier community under the Senior Services Division. Jackie believes that there's nothing more rewarding than giving back and making a difference in the lives of the people in her hometown community. Then we will have Jacqueline Miller, who is an executive board member of the Greater Los Angeles Chapter of AARP Incorporation. She joined the chapter in March 2008 and was elected chapter secretary from 2008 through 2012. In 2013, she was appointed the membership chairperson and her term in this position ends 2002, December 2021. Jacqueline interacts with the other five community, ch community chairs to ensure the chapter's success through recruiting and maintaining members, identifying and responding to essential social needs and projects for the older people in the community that will stimulate the chapter's involvement and provide meaningful and rewarding volunteer opportunities for chapter members and holding successful fundraising activities to maintain the chapter's operation and provide funds for designated charities. Jacqueline is a recipient of a 2020 chapter and REA Unit Community Service Award issued by the AARP National Office for her service to AARP and her efforts to improve the community served by her chapter. And um, we will then have Miriam Andino, who is a preparedness specialist at the Red Cross LA. She has been working with the Red Cross for two years, joining initially as an AmeriCorps member. In addition to preparedness, she has also been involved with response and recovery, both local to LA and on deployments. So we have great panelists here joining us today and I will hand it off to Laura Medina. Can you all hear me? Can you hear me? Okay, thank you, Claudia. Um, I think we've been Zooming so much, we're becoming Zoomlets, so <laughs> gotta get used to all this. Um, well, thank you for inviting us to be part of the panelists. Um, like Claudia said, we are one of the largest Meals on Wheels programs in the United States. Um, right now, because of the pandemic, we are serving a very large clientele, a large number of clientele. We grew almost 100% since uh, the outbreak. Um, 
So we are producing about uh, 13,000 meals a week and delivering about 8,000. Uh, we used to deliver once a week a hot meal, I mean, once a day a hot meal, uh, but now because of the pandemic, it's uh, one hot meal and the rest are frozen meals. So a client can choose to um, have delivery for four days, five days, or seven days. Um, our medically tailored uh, diets, uh, meals are very important to our clients. So in addition to our regular diet, uh, we do have the uh, vegetarian, uh, we have puree for those who have difficulty swallowing or have no teeth. Uh, we have renal diet meal for those that are on dialysis. Then we have many clients on dialysis. And then we also have a low K for those that are on blood thinners. Um, we also offer breakfast to our clients that wish to have breakfast. And, um, you know, they have a very nice supply of food for the whole week. Uh, based on the number of days that they want. Um, because we are privately funded, um, we don't get any government money for our meals. So we do charge a nominal fee. Um, it costs us about eight to $10 to produce a meal and we charge $2.50 per meal. The breakfast is free. Um, however, if the client cannot afford any of it or maybe just a portion of it, we do have financial assistance for that. And we do have many clients who have been given the, that assistance, you know, to get their meal delivered to their door. Um, our eligibility is basically, you know, they need to be homebound. Um, it is regardless of age, religion, income. However, the majority of our clients are elderly. The average age is 72 and very poor. Uh, as Claudia mentioned in the introduction, you know, the majority of our clients, you know, receive less than $20,000 um, a year. Um, so we, we serve a very poor clientele in the city of Los Angeles. We serve 45 zip codes. Um, we can't serve the entire city of Los Angeles. As you know, it's very spread out and we have to be mindful of the uh, temperature of the food. Uh, we don't want any foodborne illness. So we are within a 45 zip code area. Um, so what, uh, what we do is we take the registration over the phone and um, the service area is checked with the receptionist. So the best thing to do is to call our office directly uh, the telephone number is area code 213-484-7775 between 8 and 4. And someone will, um, you know, ask you various questions to determine whether you're in our area or not. And if you're not, we will give you a referral to the closest Meals on Wheels provider in Los Angeles County. Um, in July, we started uh, a beautiful program called a social call program. So this is um, a program whereby we match volunteers to, with clients to want to be uh, called periodically to see how they're doing. Uh, these volunteer service telephone buddies. Um, and with all this pandemic um, situation, you know, they've become even more isolated than ever. So uh, this program has just been beautiful, and uh, we are looking for volunteers in that program. Um, and also, we um, are developing a new program called Talking Tech, and this is a technology-based program. So those clients that are interested in learning how to Zoom, um, use their smartphone, um, get a tablet loaned, uh, from our office, which we do have, um, we're going to make that happen. So we're developing some educational and cultural programs for our clients to get them more uh, connected to technology and, and to the world out there. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Laura, for sharing everything that you and your organization does. Um, and just a reminder for everyone, um, if you have any questions, please uh, make sure to put them in the Q&A function located at the bottom of your screen and we'll make sure to answer them at the end. Um, so now we will move on to Jackie Rodriguez.
There we go. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, thank you to the Red Cross for having me be a part of this. Um, I am currently with the Whittier Senior Center. Um, this pandemic has fortunately um, given us the opportunity just to think outside of the box, um, be innovative thinkers, um, to come up with different ideas and ways just to continue to connect with our seniors, given that our facility is currently closed. Um, weekly, we do currently are doing um, a newsletter. Um, in that newsletter, we are providing different sources for our seniors. Um, a lot of them have reached out, word puzzles, um, brain teasers. So it's a lot of light reading, um, but we also include a lot of different uh, resources um, that are of course beneficial to them. Um, back in August, um, we started doing our drive-by um, more so events for our seniors just to stay connected with them. Um, we actually celebrated our National Senior Citizen Day. Um, we had about 80 seniors signed up which was an awesome turnout. Um, staff drove to our senior homes. Um, we provided a swag bag with different resources, um, reading material. Um, we got a lot of different donations um, from different agencies. Um, we have, of course, um, reading materials that were provided in the swag bag, um, a mask, um, hand sanitizer. So a lot of goodies for the seniors, which they really enjoyed. Um, that was a great opportunity for us to really connect with them, um, given the fact that we haven't seen them for quite some time. Um, so it was it was amazing to be there in person, of course, maintaining social distance, but a lot of them still crave that uh, social aspect. So that was, that was an awesome day for us. Um, another thing that we did back in November was our uh, parking lot bingo. It was for uh, Thanksgiving. So we called it a gobble gobble bingo. Bingo, excuse me. Um, it was a drive-in style. We used an FM transmitter um, to call out the numbers. Um, we did draw a crowd of about 25 participants. Um, again, we got a lot of our prizes donated by local agencies. Um, it was an awesome turnout. Again, a lot of them were happy to see friends that they did either talk to or hang out with them at the senior or senior center. Um, we did provide our, our bingo cards as well as the markers. So all they needed to do was drive in, sign in. We handed them a, a goodie bag as well with, with some written materials, um, the bingo card and a marker. Um, back in October, we started a drive-by birthday celebration for our um, our membership uh, seniors that are do have a membership with us. Um, so what that includes is um, a few of us from the senior center. We drive out to their homes, of course. Um, we sing happy birthday and we provide a cupcake and a happy birthday lawn sign. They absolutely love it. Um, there are quite a few that are still kind of iffy about it because of the pandemic and we totally get it but we do have a lot that say oh I live by myself or this is something that's really meaningful to me or it's again it's a social aspect which which is awesome for us um, we did also start zoom training back in October um, we wanted to get our programming up again um, just given the fact that again our facility is closed um, but we did want to start some Zoom classes, um, but a lot of our seniors aren't too familiar with the platform. Um, so it took off uh, back in October. A lot of them were eager, eager to come out. We did one-on-one -on -one appointments. Um, they would come to our facility, um, encourage them to bring an iPad or their own computer or a phone. Um, and we would just do a step-by-step -step tutorial um, on how to work Zoom, how to how to start their own meeting or how to join a meeting. Um, a lot of them, it was it was confusing for a lot of them, um, but we, we told them, hey, if you want to go home and practice, come back. We're more than happy to help you uh, or just give us a call. And maybe we can we can walk you through the steps. But majority of the time, again, um, a lot of them, it was it was an opportunity to get out of the house, um, an opportunity to come in and talk to somebody, um, which, again, was was pleasant. Um, back in December, we did a Santa Santa stops. So we had one of our staff dress up as Santa. Again, we drove out to the seniors' homes. Um, I believe for that specific event, we had about 45 seniors. 
Um, we made um, stockings and we included um, hot chocolate um, and we made ornaments for the seniors. So we stuffed the stockings with, with those goodies. Um, and we took pictures with Santa. They loved it, completely loved it. Um, after that, we, we mailed out the pictures to our seniors and we got a lot of good feedback with that. Um, so it's, it's an ongoing process of trying to just think outside of the box and to come up with ideas um, to let them know that we're still thinking of them, that we're still here. Um, and it's, 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 been, it's been awesome to just continue to, to keep that contact with them. So um, our next event is going to be in February. We're doing a Cupid, Cupid delivery. Um, we plan on going out again, um, maintaining social distance. Um, small Valentine's gift just to let them know that of course we're thinking of them and that we're still here. So it's been awesome to, to go out and to see our seniors and to continue to provide um, different resources and, and just good, good stuff all around, especially in this time. Thank you so much, Jackie, for sharing um, all the amazing work that's being done and the creative ways to stay connected with the community. Um, we will now hand it to Jacqueline Miller. Hello. Uh, thank you, Claudia and the Red Cross for inviting me to, to be a part of this project. I was uh, contacted by one of our members, and I think she's an associate uh, with the Red Cross. So she twisted my arm a little bit, and I agreed to do this. But um, I appreciate the invitation. The AARP chapter is an, uh, an affiliate of AARP National. And we, uh, prior to the pandemic, we had some programs in progress and I'll talk about those. But after the pandemic, we have not been able to get um, a release from them to do in-service or in-person activities. We're hopeful that sometimes in the spring or maybe early fall this year, we'll be able to get back with our programs. But um, in January, we had uh, someone come out from the LA County Recorder's Office and they demonstrated the voting machines, the new ones that were used this, in this past election. So in addition to the members that were at the meeting, we had people invited from the community. I don't remember right now how many we had, but it, we had at least 20 visitors from the community that were interested and came in and they learned, <laughs> excuse me, how to use the machines. And um, there was further training for those that felt comfortable with, uh, uncomfortable with the training that they had. So we allowed them to have additional training. The uh, program in February was kind of a fun program. Again, we invited members outside the community in addition to our members, and we celebrated Black History Month, Mardi Gras, and Valentine's Day. And the, the people that came in from the community were very excited. They got to dress in, in um, their finery. We had a prom, uh, impromptu um, fashion show for them. So totally, it was enjoyed by all of our mem uh, members and as well as our community people. Uh, prior to the pandemic, and we will probably return back to our normal process and in, in what we do, but we realize now that we need to think for emergency purposes for the future. So prior to the pandemic, we uh, provided volunteers to community organizations that were in the process of implementing programs, services, or events that benefited the, the seniors. We have worked closely with uh, council districts eight, nine, and 10, as well as some of the, the organizations in the com uh, community that in which we have our meetings. And we were right in the process of contacting uh, the council people to set up a partnership, a real partnership where we would work on a consistent basis with them when so we, that we've had to cancel, but we intend to revisit that so that we can get more exposure in the community. Uh, we sponsor projects that help uh, people that are in our senior centers. We uh, give gift cards uh, to Dollar, about from Dollar Tree and 99 cent store. They enjoy those because they can 
go and buy little articles that they want to purchase, as well as food articles, I mean, I'm sorry, food items. The um, senior um, transitional housing program, we've been involved in that and we have provided them with gift cards. And since it's transitional, we also put together gift bags with uh, toiletries or whatever they, we think they might need as they go to a different location. This is something new to us. So we, we're asking the transitional housing program to give us leadership on what they need from us as volunteers. We have um, worked with, the, with USC for health fair. We, have, we work annually with the US Postal Carrier Union in their annual food drive, that's in May. And we divert just a little bit sometimes and we work with, a, with an elementary school and we provide uh, backpacks and school supplies. And on one occasion, we were fortunate enough to have enough money that we could um, buy uniforms for some of the kids that are there that attend there. We work annually with the California Science Center in the Exhibition Park. And again, this is a little bit away from the seniors, but we, we all of our members love to volunteer there. And we have been able to recruit and meet new people, new seniors there. This is uh, for the annual science fair. And just a little side note, uh, most of our volunteers were able to participate when the Space, uh, space Shuttle Endeavor was uh, on display. So we, we were involved in that. But basically what we, what we like to do is go out, find organizations or they can find us. Uh, we don't have to do a lot of outside recruiting. A lot of it is uh, referrals from our current members and sit down with us and tell us what they need for their organization. And then we provide the volunteers. We have uh, people that um, our members are, have an array of uh, backgrounds. We have postal workers, uh, retired teachers, nurses, you name it. We have those people. And um, we don't always send the volunteers out specifically to a project that's part of their background. They like to shift and we switch it around so that everybody gets a chance to volunteer their time. So I'm, I know that as soon as the pandemic settles and we get an okay from our national office, then we will go back to doing what we do best and that's providing people with, to organizations that need our support. The, the volunteering can involve uh, pretty much anything that they need. We have people who are qualified to work with them. So we're looking forward to getting back in the fall. We're not gonna be too optimistic and say we will be going back in the spring because it doesn't look like that's gonna happen. But again, we take our direction from the National Office of AARP. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jacqueline, for sharing all the amazing support and services. Um, I'm going to now hand it off to Miriam. Mm -mm. Hello. Hi, everyone. My name is Miriam. I'm the preparedness specialist for the Los Angeles region. Um, and today I'm going to be going over a few. Um, sorry, my dog circling me. Um, today I'm going to be going over a few tips that are essential to have anytime, whether it's during COVID or um, pre-COVID, after COVID, it's good to have um, these tips on hand just so we're safe um, in our own homes. One second, my, um, I have to deal with my dog. One second.
Oh, sorry, she's used to playtime right now. <laughs> um, so as I was saying, I have a few tips that I'm going to give out on disaster preparedness in our homes, especially right now when we're spending lots of time at home. Um, and I, I'm gonna go over the basics and also go into a bit more detail on how to prepare specifically if you're an older adult. Um, so first of all, we're gonna follow the basics, basic steps of having a kit, making a plan and staying informed. So our kit, we have to make sure and have the essentials we need, uh, whether it be um, medication or uh, devices we use on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, we have to keep in mind what these devices are and have an inventory of them. So if we use hearing aids, we need to make sure we have extra batteries. Um, if we have medication, we, we need to make sure we have an extra um, prescription just in case we're not able to go to the pharmacy. Um, so we need to cater our emergency kits with the things that we use on a daily basis. And that's in addition to items that you should have in your emergency kit. So this would be food, water, um, hygiene supplies, extra pair of clothes, um, and tools as well, such as flashlights and um, wrenches to turn off gas if needed. So these are just some of the basic things you need in an emergency kit, um, just to get an idea of where to get started. Uh, once you have a basic emergency kit in, in place, you need to make sure you're able to transport this kit if needed, um, in case you have to evacuate. So in the situation where you have to evacuate, it should be a kit where you can transport it either like a backpack or um, a suitcase that you can roll out something that you can carry out by yourself and not require assistance. And when we're thinking of having our emergency kit, we also need to cater it to, again, that situation of evacuating and the situation in which we have to stay at home and rely on what we have on at home um, to get by, just in case first responders and other services aren't available. In addition to the kit, we need to make sure we have a plan. So how do we evacuate? Who will be there to help us? We have to make sure to have a support network, especially as older adults. We should make sure we have our contact info down with other people's contact info, just in case we need to provide it to someone who's um, helping us. We need to make sure we have uh, those in our network who are gonna be helping us. So caregivers, um, children, neighbors, friends. We need to have a list of them and also include some of them in your emergency plan um, so that they're aware that if something does happen, they're the ones um, who are gonna go and assist you when they're, out, when they're available. So um, when you have this network all settled, you start discussing how your plan will be in case of a, a, an emergency. So who, is available on certain days. Let's say your daughter is available to help you Monday through Friday, and then a neighbor is available on weekends. So that's kind of how you start planning, um, depending on everyone's availability and access to you. Um, and you'll also have to practice this plan. So you do a run through, take your emergency kit with you, have everyone who's designated to help you participate as well, so that when if something does happen, they're able to carry out the plan smoothly and not stumble and we can smooth out any mistakes that you encounter during your practice. Uh, you also have to make sure to um, stay informed. So the normal ways we're usually accustomed to contacting others right now is through phone calls, text messages, social media. Um, we'll have to stay informed through other ways so some ways could be through television to see what's going on. Um, radio is a very important one. Make sure you have a radio that's battery powered or solar powered so that you can stay informed as to what's happening around you. Um, the stations you have to keep in mind to have our AM stations is where you'll find new stations and they're the stations that are gonna be functioning if local towers are down. So make sure you have a radio and that you access the AM channels in case you need to stay informed. 
And finally, um, that's just a brief overview of how to get started on being prepared um, in case of an emergency. So build a kit, make a plan, and stay informed. And then finally, some things you should you could do now are in your own home would be checking your smoke alarms, make sure that your smoke alarms are functioning. Um, especially during the winter, we use heaters, make sure um, we're using these appliances carefully so that we don't have home fires. Uh, make sure that candles are, aren't left unattended, that cooking, uh, when we're cooking, it's also not left unattended. So these are all things we can do to prevent home fires. Um, if you have a smoke alarm that is not working, make sure to try to replace the batteries or the whole device as soon as possible. And also some things you can do would be, um, normally you can contact the Red Cross to install alarms at the moment, um, you can do so as well. However, we will be placed on a wait list um, and we do not have a set date as to when we'll start installing smoke alarms again, but you will be contacted as soon as possible when we start making these appointments. Um, and also a few things that we're providing right now is information on COVID safety. So making sure that you're following all the guidelines that have been pushed out by uh, officials, public health officials, all this information we've been providing it via be Red Cross Ready. It's our preparedness uh, presentations that we provide to the general adult public. We also have specific senior Be Red Cross Readies where we'll go more into depth on how to be prepared, how to make your kit and your plan. So if you're interested in getting a better idea of this plan that I've gone through, um, you'll find it beneficial to sign up for the senior Be Red Cross Ready. You can visit our website and request a presentation either for yourself or a group. Um, and we'll, you'll be able to get all that information that um, should be you know, very useful to you. Um, and you'll also go over in that presentation on how to react to several of your local hazards. In our case in California, it would be home fires, earthquakes, and wildfires. So if you're interested in learning more about those situations, please go online and Claudia will post the website so you can sign up for one of those presentations. Thank you. Thank you, Miriam, for sharing all these different tools um, and services of how we can stay prepared during times of emergencies. And now we will move on to the um, Q&A section of um, this community conversation. So as a reminder, if you have any questions at all, please submit them via the Q&A function located at the bottom of your screen. Um, I do have a couple of questions already. Um, so for Miriam, someone asked if there are any Red Cross classes that are being offered right now to seniors, and if so, what times are they available? So on a monthly basis, we have a few scheduled. Um, these are general B Red Cross readies. Um, they'll probably touch a few um, things that are beneficial for seniors. However, this is for the general adult uh, audience. And you can sign up for those. Um, I believe Claudia posted the website. Um, the ones for this month are home fire specific. Um, and if you're interested in having one for a group, you can always request your own and specify that you're interested in the senior B Red Cross Ready. Thank you so much. Um, another question we have is for Laura. Um, do you have any, do you have translators available? And um, can you please um, share the number to call again? Um, yeah, we do. Sp we have a Spanish speaking capability. All of our receptionists speak Spanish. Um, we also have uh, access to some Chinese and uh, Mandarin and those type of languages. Um, and our telephone number, our main telephone number is area code 213-484. 7775. We also have a voicemail system. So if they call after four or before eight, the message will be recorded and they'll be called back. 
Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, another question I have is for Jackie Rodriguez. Um, do you have, do you plan to have on, do you plan on having more one-on-one -on -one training sessions? On me. There we go, there we go. Um, our Zoom training is actually um, continuous, but for whatever reason, we haven't had um, too many seniors. I think just because of the, the number increase um, because of COVID. Um, but the only one-on-one uh, -on -one appointments right now is, is really the Zoom training. So we're continuing to try to push it. But like I said, the, the numbers is, the increase in the numbers is, is I believe was what holding us back. Thank you okay. so much. Claudia, I wanted to clarify, our telephone number is 484, not 464. I just noticed it on the. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. 484, okay. Um, let me see if we have any more questions. It seems that we do not have any more questions. Um, and if that is the case, I um, just want to remind everyone that all of the resources that were shared today will be sent in an email after the community conversation. And I want to thank the panelists again so much for joining us today and for sharing the amazing work they're doing and all the resources and services they have to offer. Um, and if you have any questions, um, please feel free to um, email me or um, any, we might provide the contact information in the email that we sent. Um, so again, thank you so much and I hope you all have a fabulous and great day.